Hayoki RM3548 milliohmmeter setup, range selection, and zero adjust. So I'm going to show you some of the ins and outs of this Hayoki RM3548 resistance meter. This has a lot of special features, but I also want to show you how to basically use it. And there aren't any videos on the internet that I can find that show you all the ins and outs of all these controls. So I'm going to take you through these controls the best that I can, and I'm going to show you as many as I can over a series of a couple of different videos. So first of all, we have this temperature sensor right here, and this will do temperature compensation, but there's a little trick to these things. The first thing is on top, this is where it plugs into, and it's just going to measure your ambient temperature. So we're going to plug that in. Second of all, we have the leads here, and these are really specialized leads. You have to use these leads. And if you look at the two leads, there's a triangle on each one. So one of these is a sensing, and the other one is actually the voltage. And that triangle has to align with the triangle on the meter here. So when we plug these in, they have to be plugged in in this fashion. So there are a lot of fancy features here and a lot of buttons with multiple options to them. Let's take a look at some of the basic measurement settings. Well, the first is the on button and notice it says press for one second. So we're going to hold that down for one second. It's going to check the display and what you're going to notice is that it's on auto. It's running at the 3 million ohm range. And this is a mega ohms down here as well. And you have actually five character spaces. So the accuracy of this meter is insane. There's your battery level right up at the top here. And over here is where you choose your auto or your separate ranges. So if I move this up one, that'll take the auto off of that display. And if I move it down, you'll go to 300,000 ohms one more to 30,000 ohms, again to 3,000 ohms, 300 ohms, 30 ohms, 3 ohms, 300 milli ohms, 30 milli ohms, 3 milli ohms. And this value right here, that's 100 millionth of an ohm. That's insanely accurate. So let's go ahead and put it back on auto for the moment. And let's talk about doing the zero adjust. So to do the zero adjust, it's really important that we connect these leads properly. Now, if you look at these leads, on one side of them, they have a V right here. And that V is your sensing lead. And on the other side, there's nothing. So it's really important that the red lead, the V on the red lead, that is on top of the V on the black lead. And we're going to leave that right there at about a 90 degree angle from each other. And you'll see that it's not exactly perfect, but that's into the really small values. This is 3 milliohms, so this is less than 3 milliohms. This is 100 thousandths worth of an ohm. And when you do the zero adjust, if you have it on auto, it will zero adjust all the ranges. If you put it on a particular range like the 30 milliohm, it will only zero adjust your 30 milliohm range. So when I put it on auto, I want you to watch when I press and hold the zero adjust, you'll see this cycle through the ranges. So let's go ahead and do that. As it goes through every single range and zeroes it out. It ends up at 3 milliohms, and that's like one or two hundred millionth of an ohm. That's outrageously, insanely accurate. So that is now auto adjusted. And we could now actually make a measurement. Now I want you to know 
that once I've disconnected these leads, there is no reading on this scale whatsoever. It just leaves it blank. It waits to make some kind of a measurement. So I've got a decade box sitting over here in the corner, and I'm just going to go ahead and connect these leads up. And it's set for about 40 ohms. So let's just come over and make my connection. So it comes up really close to 40 ohms, which is excellent. If I change this scale to a smaller scale, so let's go down to 30 ohms, notice that we get this symbol, which is OF or 0F, simply means that we're on the wrong range. We're trying to measure something that's bigger than 30 ohms. And of course, once I go to 300 ohms, it gives me my reading. And if you go bigger than 300 ohms, all you do is you lose your accuracy down over here, just like any other ohm meter as you raise in scale.